on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Ethereum's latest hard fork has happened, and so far, so good. Voltoro is the one-of-a-kind online exchange where you can trade between gold and Bitcoin. Reserves can be audited online at any time and are protected from confiscation and company failure. Sign up for a free account today by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news. Today we turn to Coindesk, coindesk.com. This article is a couple of days old because there wasn't a precise day when the Ethereum hard fork was going to take place. Uh, I thought it was going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. So I'd left it until today to make sure that it actually happened so that I could report on it in retrospect. So this article is entitled Ethereum's Fourth Fork. So far, so good. So it begins by saying, so far developers are calling Spurious Dragon a success. That's an interesting name, code name for this fork. Ethereum's latest hard fork officially activated at block 2,675,000 today. Well, that would be two days ago. It comes after the code was first tested as a solution to the ongoing network problem, problems and performance issues. Among other changes, the fork will give developers the ability to delete empty accounts left by an unknown attacker that had effectively flooded the network. Now, I'm covering this today as a follow-up to episode 100, 145, where this latest hard fork was announced. And now that's happened, I wanted to see how it went. So when we say attacker, we are talking about the DAO that was previously built on Ethereum. And the DAO had a feature in the code that an attacker used to drain the funds that people had invested. And that incident led to Ethereum splitting into two versions, Ethereum Core and Ethereum Classic. Now, one question I don't actually have the answer to right now is whether people are developing apps on Ethereum Classic. I hear a lot about new Ethereum-based apps, but I always assume that they are build being built on Ethereum Core. So if you have any information about apps being built on Ethereum Classic, please let me know about that. Because if apps aren't being built on Ethereum Classic, Ethereum Classic is just purely a speculative coin, which isn't really the idea, is it? Anyway, let's continue. While generally seen as a dangerous way to upgrade, upgrade a blockchain, since it can lead to a network split, Ethereum's developers have embraced hard forks as a regular way to fix technical problems. This is Ethereum's third hard fork in the last four months. And like I said in the last episode, blockchains are great because they provide a mathematical way to reach consensus amongst computers on the network. However, when it comes to upgrading the software, that has to be done by human beings. And we don't yet have a reliable way for human beings to reach consensus. Now, the reason that's required is because it's human beings who have to install the updated software. And if some people don't like the new software, you can end up splitting a blockchain into two, just like what happened with Ethereum. And that's the main reason why hard forks are generally considered to be scary. So continuing here, it says today's hard fork further fine tunes the prices of opcodes that the attacker abused to cheaply spam the network with transactions, contracts and accounts that every node on the network needed to run. Now, I'm repeating a lot of points I originally made in episode 145, but I think it's worthwhile. I see Ethereum increasing the underlying transaction cost as kind of making a change to the laws of physics in their universe. The example I gave previously was an app that was built on Ethereum that was written based on certain fixed numbers, like the transaction cost. And then like the laws of physics, you can kind of count on them and you don't expect them to change, except that seems to be what's happening here. Now, while my point may be valid theoretically, practically, there may be no apps currently built on Ethereum that match my example. So I guess we'll wait and see on that front. 
The article goes on to say, Notably, the last few weeks have seen a decline in attacks, temporarily halting issues for users that began in September at the time of the project's annual developer conference. Hmm, bit of a coincidence, isn't it, that uh, Ethereum had their annual developers conference and it coincided with a lot of attacks on the network. Now, I had some comments on the previous episode on this topic saying that people couldn't get their Ethereum wallets to sync with the network and a whole load of other issues, but those issues should now be resolved. And then the article concludes by saying, so far it seems the impact is minimal, that being the impact of the hard fork. Shapeshift and Kraken have temporarily halted Ether trades as the hard fork finishes up, but it's worth mentioning that Ethereum might have also unintentionally forked last week. So Shapeshift and Kraken, they are cryptocurrency exchanges. But this is interesting, isn't it? That um, Ethereum unintentionally forked last week. This occurred when one Ethereum client, Parity, released a version that forked at a particular block number that was previously decided upon but later changed. This meant that nodes that didn't update from the version that temporarily forked, as not everyone had upgraded from that version of the software. So this shows that it doesn't have to be conscious disagreement that causes hard forks to be risky. In this case, it was like the metaphor that comes to my mind is like a convoy of cars that was driving down the highway. And the leader decides to, the convoy is going to turn off at the next exit. So some of the drivers in the convoy like weren't paying attention or they didn't get the message. So when the convoy finally arrives at the exit, most of the cars turn off but the drivers that were not paying attention to their messages, they just carry on driving straight on, right? Effectively splitting the convoy into two. And of course, when those cars that go straight on, once they realize that they've made a mistake or that they're no longer in contact with the main convoy, they'd have to turn around and then rejoin the main convoy or carry on going. It's entirely up to them. And I see this as a particularly interesting phenomena in cryptocurrencies and blockchains because this is the overlap between man and machine when it comes to consensus. It's between the free will of humans and the consensus of computers. So the article says that this development showcases how hard fork best practices are hard to come by and that in a sense, each one still remains experimental. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button, leave me a comment below with some feedback, and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by becoming a Cryptoversity patron. From as little as $10 a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. But that's all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.